What do you think men want from women? From what I see, men are craving, really craving a, a woman who is attentive to them, who listens to them. When I uh, craving someone who gives um, some physical touch, being in the 40s, most of the guys are divorced. I, I don't meet too many men that have never been married out of the 11, only one, no, two was never married. One was really young. He was like 34. And when I touch them, it's it's like this this complete melting of them. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And you talk to them and you find that their ex-wives were just, they withheld sex. They were just mean. They were cruel. I mean, we're talking just, and of course, I don't know what the, the wife's side is. I don't know what they did as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, have them to listen to them, compliment them. I like your watch. Oh, I really like your beard. Oh, that's so soft. Oh, you smell really good. Men don't get that anymore. They get, oh, you're terrible. And you, and I don't ask about their, of course, their job. I don't ask about their money. Mm -hmm. um, I let them lead. I, they pick the place to go. I said, absolutely. Sounds wonderful. Not, I'll meet you there. Not so much on like the short term basis where you're dating, but like mm -hmm. when I ask you, what do you think that men are looking for? Like more on a long term yeah. basis that would, that would turn them into a boyfriend committed sort of long term relationship. What I, what I thought that they needed was an independent woman who could come with their own money mm -hmm. and, uh, basically describing a dude at that point. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Independent, has her own money, has her own car, has her own house, right? That's what that's what I was yeah. told. That's what men wanted. No, yeah. that's yeah. not. Um, when I think about someone who, you you say this a lot, compliment their life. When a lot of men can't cook, so they want somebody that can cook a home cooked meal. Mm -hmm. Someone that is who is dedicated to them. They have confidence. They feel comfortable. They don't feel like they are competing with other dudes. That you're a committed woman. That you are. Um, that you are there for them. That I. I think that they want to feel like you think they're a manly man, no matter what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that you find them physically attractive, whether that is you tell them that or you demonstrate that through uh, other physical actions. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 not someone who's going to nag and all day long. Um, the longest relationship I had every time he came home, I was sitting at the door and waiting for him and opening up the door. Hey, I'm so happy to see you. Thank goodness you're here. Mm -hmm. And you think about what most people come home to and they get home to, Hey, what's up? And go, you know, something. And that's what I think men, men want okay. long term. Okay. Well, I mean, you, you've got some idea. I mean, there's a little bit of neediness though, right? I mean, like, the way that you're describing the um, one of the relationships you had in the last year, it, it, had, it had gone for a couple of weeks and then you had to have this sort of talk a few weeks in. Um, I think that you want to wait a, a little bit before you're, hey, you know, where do we stand? You know, yes. Thing, right. Like you want to sort of get to a, a month or two of dating, I think is reasonable. Within a few weeks, a little bit of a push. I think most guys out there, um, you know, they were dating a gal for a week or two and she's like, so where do we stand? They, they'd probably be like, uh, you need to chill the fuck out. Cause I it's, know you. it's interesting because, um, it was actually, it was, he had went out on a date. Um, and it was after we were, were talking and I said, well, if you've already made a date with somebody, we're just, we just started talking. I don't expect you to cancel the date. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards I said, are you going to ask her out again? And he could have said, I don't know. Uh, that I, you know, I just want to take it slow, but he said, well, what do you want? I said, well, I guess if you really want to know, I'm like, I, I want a, a, a committed relationship. That's what, that's really what I want. And then he agreed to it. So my thought is always, well, if you, if you weren't willing to, why'd you ask? Cause you know, there's either two points. I, I want something or I don't mm -hmm. want something. So yeah, yeah, I feel like though, a lot of guys are very uncalibrated when it comes <laughs> to dealing with women in long-term relationships. They really suck at it. They're like, we've, We've spent years trying to fix this now. I've got 1500 videos out. I've got 200 podcast episodes out collectively. I've got two versions of a book out. Another one I'm working on. I've, I've done as much as I possibly can in the time that I've been around. And it's very, very difficult to try to calibrate guys to that. So I can understand you having a conversation where you're like, hey, you know, um, so you're seeing somebody else. And it's like, what do you want to go? And it's like, oh, yeah, let's be a thing. You know, and you sort of just jumps right down it. I can see that happening. Mm -hmm. um, so 
it's tough for women too, right? Because guys don't know how to lead. They don't know how to calibrate themselves to relationships. It's not easy. Um, Moffat and I will be working towards fixing that with a course this year that will walk guys through it step by step um, because it gets pretty exhausting having to repeat ourselves over and over again. So, mm -hmm. But I can understand what you're saying there. So to sort of clarify that, because I wanted to sort of see where you're at, there's really three things that guys want. Okay. They just want to know that you're useful to their lives. Like some of the things that you're saying, like they want to, you know, they want to know that you're touching them and that you like them, that you're loyal to them. That's kind of a given, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like if you're with a guy and you've had a conversation about, you know, where you guys stand sort of thing, mm -hmm. it's kind of understood that if you've done that, that he's expecting you to only deal with him, right? That you're not seeing other people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to overtly state it, you know, like some guys will have to, you know, overtly say to him and like, okay, you know, if you want to claim me, that's fine. If I see you out with any other guys having lunch with, you know, with ex-boyfriends, like I don't deal with women like that, right? Like right. some guys will have to spell it out or they'll have to correct the behavior if, you know, she hangs out with exes from the past and has lunch and stuff like that. Those sorts of things, which, which could lead to deceit or her breaking the, um, you know, the, the overt contract that you've made. Um, so they want gals to be useful to their lives, believe it or not, you know, can you cook? You know, if I'm busy and I'm working on something project wise and you have time and you see a pile of laundry, can you run it through, you know, the machine for me? These are all things that piss off feminists because they're like, oh, how dare you do something for the express pleasure of a man sort of thing. You know, the patriarchy has been oppressing you. It's like, no, that's just being a nice person. Like when I take you out for dinner and show you a good night, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. So all of that narrative that gals have heard about, you know, doing nice things for men, Take it all, beat it with a stick, take it behind the, the house, bury it six feet under and just be done with it. Because the kinds of guys that are really going to like blow your hair back and really crank your wheels and, you know, get you really attracted to them are going to be thankful and are going to want to see you more if you're useful to their lives. So being useful is incredibly important. Um, being respectful. Is, is so important to dudes. Women totally underestimate this. They'll, they'll taunt men. They'll, um, they'll flick boogers at them. You know, they'll do things to irritate them. They'll, um, you know, they'll, they'll uh, banter with them to the point where it's not even witty banter or, or even fun. It's like, you know, you're trying to compete or you're trying to be like a dude, right? It's like, I will like me and Moff when we're together doing shit, you know, with the, the boys, it's like, there's, there's witty banter. And that's how men sort of like bond and do things. But I know that women have been been raised now and through culture and Hollywood and society and music and all this sort of stuff, you know, they've been convinced, oh, well, you should be like witty bantering men the way that men do men sort of thing. And it's like, no, we don't want that. We want respect. Mm -hmm. You know, we women, want you to be women useful. don't banter with each other normally. Like I, yeah, I've seen that as very rarely, like women don't do this whole back and forth kind of shit talking to one another because they take that stuff really seriously. So it's always women that talk about, Oh, I want witty banter, this and that. But you know, it's, it's interesting because we do that in our own men's circles because, and there's a reason behind it. It's about, I want to see what this dude's made of. I want to see if he right. can take it. I want to see if he can give other. it back. We want to test him and see if he's a competent dude that can handle himself. And, you know, women are hardwired to do that too shit testing or competency testing but the the little jabs and the paper cuts like they add up and to them they want a guy because women love a guy that can has the gift of gab and is witty and that can flip them on their head and you know joke circles around them and stuff like that because wit is, and humor is an indicator of intelligence and those are positive signals but it's it's one of the worst things like it's just such a huge turnoff when from a guy to hear like just yeah he did chirps and this and that and it's like look i gotta hear this all day from my buddies that are running their mouths or i gotta listen to clients that are unhappy about this and that and that are into like the last thing i need is that from from you when i come home or we're gonna go out on a date like it's just i get enough of this during the day you know figure out a way to turn that off and yeah, men want peace Mm -hmm. And I think that women have been, you know, misled and, you know, been told that men want to be challenged. I, I was, um, I don't know if you know who Danica Patrick is, but, you know. Yeah, I saw the, that one. Yeah, yeah, like one of the points mm -hmm. of contention that she had is, well, well, don't men want to be challenged? Like, you know, don't they want like somebody that's, you know, got a backbone to them sort of thing? And it's like, no, 
We don't. We want peace in our life. You know, we don't need you to run us up the flagpole when we come home or, you know, be challenged over something like that. So I think women vastly underestimate the respect component of long-term relationships and how that is sticky to a guy. Guys will keep gals around that show respect for them. Not it's forced or they're acting it, it's natural, right? Like they mm -hmm. naturally, you know, show respect for this guy. You know, they'll introduce them um, to friends and family circles and there's and there's a clear, you know, level of respect. Like, you know, if you sit down at a table at one of their family events, you go and make him a plate and bring it to him at the table sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so small, small gestures, you know, as far as use and respect are super important. But the other thing too is, and this is something that um, Dr. Orion Taraban highlighted in one of his videos, and he said something, you know, along the lines of, "You have to, you have to be willing to do the filthiest, most disgusting, and sexiest things in the bedroom that you've never done with any other guy that you'll only ever do with him." Right? Because we live in an era today, I think, where women have been with multiple guys. I think it's kind of accepted. Or it's, or it's men that are forced to accept that, you know, women have shared their bodies, you know, with multiple men. Okay, fine. We don't generally like the idea of running the numbers through our head and going, what well, was it 20? Was it 30? Was it 60? Was it 100? What is she, but it's now, okay, well, what does she do with all those guys that she's not doing with me? So you have to be willing to give him what he wants in the bed. As long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting him or others, mm -hmm. and it's, and it's it, something that he likes that gets him like revved up, be willing to do it, but be willing to do it enthusiastically. So, you know, to the point of your mom's story that, you know, she told you when, you know, she was younger, where there was a lawyer guy, and then there was your father, you know, sort mm -hmm. of thing. And, you know, the first thing that came to mind when, when she started to describe that story, Moff, what was it? You're muted, sorry. The story was what? With the uh, lawyer, what was the first thing that came to your mind? First thing for me was Alpha Widow. Pining oh, for the guy was... from her past that she couldn't yeah. look at. Oh, I, yeah. I know what you're so, talking about. So he was the guy that she wanted, that she couldn't lock down, that she always thought about, that she had hoped, you know, would take care of her and let her stay home and be a mom. And she didn't get that. So there was a, there was a degree of uh, contempt. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, they say that contempt is the, is like the clock that clicks down to the end of the relationship. When you see a woman have contempt for a man, or even the other way around, but it's usually a woman that has, you know, contempt for a man in public, it's very obvious. It's like, you know, she's literally disgusted by him mm. and annoyed and turned off and frustrated with him not being able to follow, um, you know, these things. So That's again, you know, point. so, so being, so being useful to his life, doing everything, nasty in the bedroom and being, respectful so being you know you talked about a few of these things like not nagging him sort of thing it's, um, i'll tell you a story that well after i did it i realized oh jocelyn why did you say that i i was looking up uh, one of the guys i was look, dating um his 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 address and the value of his house and i was with him and i said you know what i looked up the value of your house my house is worth more than yours and I, afterwards, I said, why in the world did you do that? That was, y'all, I know. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm getting there. I'm getting yeah. there. That was just so stupid. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, but it's that's like, what. Look at, look at Moff's, you know, oh, reaction to God. that. You yeah. know? That's like saying, that's you know, my car is better than your car. You know, I make more money than you. You know, my house <sighs> is bigger than your house. My house has 10 foot ceilings. Your house only has eight foot ceilings sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And you still got popcorn on your ceilings. You know, come on. But then I, and then I tried to, after I realized, I was like, oh, it's just because of the location. I'm closer to Atlanta than you are. That's just, that's was, why. Were you trying to be funny? Like, I don't know. Like, where did that I even don't know. come from? I, I so don't I, know. That's, that's an yeah. element of disrespect. Yeah. Yes, it, it really was. It, yeah. it, there was no reason for me to say that. I mean, it, you, I was nothing. You but... aren't even in a long term relationship at that point. So, yeah. how do you ever get to the long term relationship if you're in the dating phase and you're like, "Hey, Bob, you know, we're having a good time tonight." But by the way, I looked up your place on Zillow, and my place is worth more. Self sabotage. Yeah, he's gonna be like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> Maybe it's that it's that old creeping up of 
of the whole girl boss thing. I'm I'm so good. Why you should I have a great house, you know. Why would you want to talk to anybody else? I have this great house, you know. I have I have all these these check off lists and yeah. why would you not want this? But I mean, women never really share their pot of gold with the men. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do nice things. You know, they'll pick you up a coffee, they'll you know, they'll pick up the drinks maybe if you're going out for a date sort of thing and you grab the dinner. Like there's stuff like that that typically happens, but women don't generally say, "Hey, you know, move into my house." take your $40,000 a year job. Don't worry about it. You know, move into my $150,000 lifestyle. Don't sign a prenup and let me share all of this shit with you. Yeah. Take, take the Tesla, you know, whenever you want sort of thing, right? Like yeah. women don't generally operate like that. So when, when guys see a woman that has more than they have, they might target you like a sugar mama, right? Like they might want to use you or try to extract yes. from you. There mm -hmm. are guys that will do that. Yeah. But I they mean, why that. would you go out with a bum that's, you know, worth nothing. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here that clips from if you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.